Are you interested in visiting Universal Studios this year? If so, you need to watch this video. Hey, what's going on everybody? Rick here, and this is a walking tour of Universal Studios Florida. We're going to divide this video in this theme park into sections to make it easier for you. The first couple sections will actually be outside of the theme park. To your left there is the Universal Globe. Makes a very nice photo opportunity, as does the arch there. After you walk through the archway, to your left is the attraction height board. I do suggest you have your kids line up here, take a picture of them, so you know what rides they can ride or not ride before they get into the theme park. Straight ahead is the entrance, but before we go through the entrance, I need to show you a couple things out here. That building there, and this one right here is where you can purchase your tickets. But I do recommend you buy those online before you get here. You're already going to wait in enough lines. Don't need to add another one. So buy your tickets online. I have a link to a website we can do so in the description box. But once you do, you can print those out. Or you can come over here to the wheel call kiosks and get your tickets. Also over here is guest services should you need them. And then right around the corner, some restrooms before you get into the theme park. And now we can go to the entry gates. That building to your left. This structure to your right. New for 2024, they are using photo validation. Means they will take your picture as you enter the park. Now that we've scanned in, let me show you this first little section inside the theme park. To our left here, we have Studio Suites, a place to get sweet treats. And then the Universal Studio Store. This is the largest store inside the theme park. Has pretty much anything you could want. And a friendly reminder for 2024, no more paper maps. But you can use the Universal Orlando app. Just download that. Let's keep going left because we have rental services here. Scooters and strollers can be rented over here. Some more restrooms to our left there. And lockers, full-size lockers you can rent for all day. Back at the entrance, instead of going left, let's go right this time because there are some important things you need to know over here in this section of the park. We'll walk over here and the first thing we're going to see will be first aid. First aid is right over here, along with lost and found. Just in case you lose anything, this is where you can try to retrieve it. And some full-size lockers, again, for your rental. But then, pivoting this way, guest services. So there's a guest services outside of the gates and a guest services inside the park. Also, to the left of First Aid, Lost and Found, and the lockers, some more restrooms right through there. Now, moving forward as we enter the park, to our right is Dining Reservations. I do recommend you make reservations for spots that you would like to eat at, especially if you're visiting during one of the busy seasons, which would be Spring Break, Summer Break, and Winter Break. Right next to the dining reservations, our first restaurant, it is the Today Cafe. It has like deli sandwiches. I would call this menu sort of a, sort of an elevated menu. Not like you're gonna get just like a frozen burger patty there. Some elevated deli sandwiches. And then we have, going this way is gonna be Hollywood Boulevard. We're not gonna go that way just yet. We're gonna go straight. But to our left will be a different entrance for that Universal Studios store. And to our right, the Universe store and the Betty Boop store. Though I don't think they call it the Betty Boop store anymore, but there is a section in there for Betty Boop merchandise. All right, now we are starting to get to the good stuff. Our first real land of the theme park, Minion Land on Illumination Avenue. We're gonna have Minion Mayhem, your first minion attraction here in the park. On our left, to the right, the second minion attraction in the park, Illumination Villain Con Minion Blast. 
it's kind of a it's a blaster game, a shooter game. In addition to having two minion attractions, there are two minion stores. I'll show you those when we get up here. As you exit Minion Mayhem, you will exit through the Super Silly Stuff store for Minion's merchandise. When you exit Villain Con at Minion Blast, you're going to exit through the Evil Stuff store. Again, more Minion merchandise in there. Continuing down Illumination Avenue, more Minion stuff. We have Bake My Day, a little sweet treat spot, Minions themed. And then over here, a character meet and greet. More minions, snacks and food this way. We're gonna come upon Freeze Ray Pops. And the main minion dining area would be the Minion Cafe. Right over here to our right, it is the newest dining experience here in the theme park. Across the way from the Minion Cafe, if you don't mind if I rhyme for a minute. Still on Illumination Avenue, we have Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, not themed to the Minions. This is the fastest ride at Universal Studios Florida with a top speed of 65 miles per hour. It does not, however, take you upside down. See that loop there? It's inverted. The nice thing about this coaster is that you can pick your own song to listen to as you ride. There it goes. Now watch it. See? Technically, it does not go upside down. The last thing to show you on Illumination Avenue is Pop and Nana, little snack shop right there. Before we enter New York City, to our left, the Tonight Shop. It is the gift shop for the attraction here, known as Race Through New York, starring Jimmy Fallon. It's a screen-based ride. You will sit in like a theater that will jostle around a bit, though. To our right, this little park here, that is the only smoking section in this theme park. You're not allowed to smoke anywhere else in the theme park besides that little park there. Continuing through New York City, to our left here is Macy's. That is where we have a little show that will perform throughout the day. Marilyn Monroe and the Diamond Bellas. They sing and dance to a couple songs right there. Right next to Macy's, where Marilyn performs, we have the Revenge of the Mummy roller coaster. It's an indoor roller coaster. It is my favorite ride at Universal Studios Florida. There are some size restrictions and safety restraint restrictions for this attraction, so you might want to try the test seat before you get in the queue. Just across the street from The Mummy, my favorite ride, is my favorite restaurant here in this theme park, Finnegan's. I highly recommend it. I haven't met an entree on this menu I haven't loved, but I will point out a couple of things. The Irish fish and chips, very good. The Newcastle Irish chicken, I really like. And my favorite sandwich is the Dublin chicken sandwich. I almost forgot to tell you, there is a year-round Christmas shop here in New York City. Continuing through New York, on my left, the Palace Arcade. The name says it all. It is an arcade full of arcade games. To the right, Auntie Anne's Pretzels. And right next to it, the stage for the Blues Brothers. Another show performed here. A very fun, this might be the most fun street show you're gonna see here. I love Marilyn and the Diamond Bellas. But this show here, super fun. Also next to Auntie Anne's, the other side of Auntie Anne's is Sting Alley. Now this is a nice little place to take some photos. Looks really cool in there. This right here is a little ice cream shop, Haagen-Dazs. 
To my left, Rosie's Irish Shop. Get uh, anything related to St. Patrick's Day or Guinness in there. This alleyway, take that and on your left you will find some restrooms. And here's a favorite spot of mine, Louie's Restaurant. Get a jumbo slice of pizza. I would recommend maybe if you want to save some money in calories, it's so large, that slice of pizza, you could cut it in half and share with someone. To my right, a place many of you would be interested. Where is it? Where is it? Where is the Starbucks? It's right here in New York City. Now, we could go that way, and we will eventually towards San Francisco, but if we go the opposite way, there is an attraction this way. How to describe it? It is sort of on the outskirts of New York City. It's the Transformers Ride 3D. You can reach this attraction via New York City, as I've said, or Hollywood. It is a 3D, 4D experience ride. Very similar to the Spider-Man ride at Islands of Adventure. It's catty corner from the Film Vault, which is my favorite store here in studios. It is, it's the place where you can, uh, you can get kind of the classic merchandise, Back to the Future, Ghostbusters, E.T., things like that. Jaws is another one that's in there. Okay, we have backtracked to where the Starbucks is. One more little thing to show you for New York City before we enter San Francisco. Right here on the edge, this outside facade of Louis, what looks to be a construction site is not an actual construction site. It is the home to a show known as the Beat Builders. They will perform here, oh, five or six times a day. Very fun show, another, another street show for New York City. Now we are leaving New York City, heading into San Francisco. The first attraction we come upon, Fast and Furious Supercharged. But that's not the important thing right here. The important thing I need to show you, to the left of Fast and Furious, is a first aid station. Hopefully you don't need it, but if you do, now you know where it is. Now leaving the first aid and fast and furious area of San Francisco, to our right is a burger joint, Richter's Burgers. Now I don't eat there too often, but it has your standard theme park food of hamburgers, fries, and chicken sandwiches. The milkshakes are pretty good in here. But I wouldn't call them milkshakes, really. They're more like, you know how uh, Wendy's has the Frosties? Kind of like that. To our left, you see some construction walls and scrim. Hopefully when you visit, that's all gone, but restrooms are right through there. And they are open right now with the construction happening. See, there's proof that we're in San Francisco. The Fisherman's Wharf, which is home to my favorite bar at Universal Studios Florida, Shea Alcatraz. They do have a specialty drink called the Ocean Attack. Comes with a little shark puppet show. Yeah, a shark puppet show, that's what I should call it. And right next to it, one of the best photo opportunities. Who doesn't want to get their picture with Bruce the Shark right next to Shea Alcatraz. All right, leaving Bruce and my favorite bar, Shea Alcatraz, almost to the end of San Francisco. Almost through it already. Right over here to your left, that is the gift shop for Fast and Furious Supercharged. And to our right, a table service restaurant. There's only two, table service. That would be Finnegan's, my favorite, and Lombard's here, which specializes in seafood. And that is pretty much San Francisco. Immediately leaving San Francisco, we come to London. And we come to King's Cross Station. 
This is where the Hogwarts Express is. That will take you to Islands of Adventure. You must have a park to park ticket in order to take the Hogwarts Express. But now we are in London. Here's the London facade. Let me show you some things out here before we head into Diagon Alley. There's a little shop here. Buy a little bit of Harry Potter merchandise. Now, there's no more paper maps, so you have to use the app. Or watch this video. How do you get into Diagon Alley? Through those brick walls right there. You might think it's just restrooms, but it's not. Listen up, muggles. That's how you get into Diagon Alley. The night bus here, it kind of points the way, doesn't it? The night bus does offer a character interaction. Not just that gentleman you see right there in purple, but a shrunken head. I invite you though, you can come back here to the back of the night bus and look around in there and perhaps take a photo. See this fountain? I will mention this. There is an urban legend that since London here was built over the old Draws attraction, the urban legend is there is a mechanical shark still buried under that fountain. You know, it's gotta be close to water. <laughs> uh, over here, oh, he's happening right now. It's peeking out right now. Creature, kind of another almost character interaction as Creature will peek out from behind the curtain of the black resident every so often. You do not need to knock as Creature will come out on his own. Though you will find a lot of people knocking on the doors. It doesn't help. Right across the way from Creature is this little green London taxi hut. It's actually home to the Jacket Potatoes, one of the best snacks here you'll find at Universal. It's a pass holder favorite at least. All right, you guys remember the entrance to Diagon Alley, right? Let's go inside and check it out. And here we are through the brick walls. I have heard people gasp as they enter, even cry as they enter. So in here, Diagon Alley, you're gonna have food, shopping, and one attraction. Here's a couple of the shops right here. Each shop sort of has its own unique theming and merchandise. Let's go a little further. To our left, this is the main restaurant. It's a counter service restaurant. It's not a table service, full service restaurant. But you can get breakfast and lunch here. The Leaky Cauldron. One of the big attractions here, sort of, I mean, actually it is, the dragon on top of Gringotts. It's an unofficial attraction, let's put it that way. She will spit her fire about every 10 minutes on the tins. So let's say noon, 12.10, 12.20, 12.30, you got it. That's 3,000 plus degrees hitting us. So before we head further down Diagon Alley, I need to show you to your left here will be another alley. Through this way is Nocturne Alley. There's a shop in here and interactive wand spots and in the summertime, I have to say, very good air conditioning in here. There's the shop right there, Bergen and Burks. Merchandise for Wizards of a Darker Side. And this is one of the multiple interactive wand spots in Nocturne Alley. Back in Diagon Alley, I mentioned interactive wand spots in Nocturne Alley. Well, they are here throughout Diagon Alley and Carket Market. But in order to do the interactive wand spots, you need to have an interactive wand and you can purchase those many places, but most people like to get it here at Omnivanders. When you get to the end of Diagon Alley, you can hang a left and find the restrooms and ice cream parlor. And these facades here, they have the interactive wand spots. And right there, that is a spot for butter beer. 
But there's more than just that spot. I'll show you some other spots for Butterbeer. There's also another entrance for Nocturne Alley if you go this way. Here is the one ride in Diagon Alley. It's Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts. A hybrid roller coaster ride. Don't know quite how to describe it. It's part screen ride, part 3D ride, part roller coaster. But most often you will have to use a locker to go on it. You cannot take bags. The lockers are right there and the entrance is right there. They also have a test seat out front in case size and safety strength restrictions are concerned for you. To the right of Diagon Alley, technically this area is known as Carket Market, though most muggles won't know that. Something of note in here, Gringotts Money Exchange. You can purchase Gringotts Bank Notes in denominations of 10s or 20s. You can keep that as a souvenir or you can actually use them at Universal Orlando Resorts. Use them for shopping, for food, here in the theme parks, or you can use them at the hotels. In Carcat Market, there is this stage. There are two shows performed on this stage. One is the Tales of Beetle the Bard, kind of a, a puppet type show. And then also a song and dance showed Celestina Warbeck and the Banshees. A little further, in Carcat Market, in addition to all the little interactive wand spots, we have the Hopping Pot. This is probably the most popular spot to get butterbeer. Regular butterbeer, frozen butterbeer are my favorite, which is hot butterbeer. Across the way from the Hopping Pot is Sugar Plums, a place for some sweet treats in the Wizarding World. And I mentioned Ollivanders as a spot to get wands. You can also get wands right here. Wands by Gregorovich. And I should mention there is another place to get butterbeer. I should have told you that when I showed you the Leaky Cauldron. Because of course you can get butterbeer in the Leaky Cauldron. So that was our look at London and Diagon Alley. Which I might ought to mention. To me Diagon Alley might be the best themed area of any theme park. The theming is just off the charts in there. It's like you stepped into the movie or stepped into the books. But now we're gonna make our way around the rest of the theme park. So leaving Diagon Alley, kinda go that way to get to the next attraction. But I would like to point out, there are these Coke freestyle stations throughout the theme park. You can purchase a refillable bottle and get yourself Coke or water or Powerade at any of these types of Coke Freestyle stations. A, another set of restrooms. Kind of a holdover from uh, the old Jaws attraction. Not rethemed to anything. Just kind of kept the same look. Straight ahead, that's the old Fear Factor Stadium. Eventually, we think some new attraction will go in there, but as for now, it is mainly used for a stage show for Halloween Horror Nights. Now, before we get to MIB, this little vacation information station right ahead of us, it is a spot where they will try to sell you timeshare, but also a guest services in there. Uh, like a mini guest services. Not full service, but they can do some things in there for you. And now we have reached the MIB Men in Black Alien Attack Attraction. Another blaster or shooter type game. But to me, this one is way, way better than Minion Blast. It's another ride you can't take bags on. So there are lockers right there next to the entrance. Or to the right of the entrance, I should say. And then we have the Men in Black gift shop. It's the MIB gear shop. You will exit through that gift shop when you're done with the attraction. And I might add, that gift shop and the attraction queue, the best air conditioning in the park. Why? Because they use that alien technology, I guess. Continuing around the park, I mentioned the Coke Freestyle stations. This is the fanciest of them all. An entire building dedicated to the Coke Freestyle machines. 
just beyond that fancy Coke Freestyle Station. We're going to enter Springfield, home of the Simpsons. This area here, known as Krusty Land, home of the Simpsons ride. I'll leave a link to it, but this ride did make a video of mine that I called Rick's Top 6 Rides to Make You Sick. Where exactly did it end up on that Top 6 Rides to Make You Sick? Go check out the video and find out. Did want to give you that little warning when it comes to this ride. Also, this is like the Midway Games area. So plenty of little games you can play and try to win some prizes all throughout Krusty Land here. On the edge of Krusty Land and Fast Food Boulevard in Springfield, another attraction. This one, one of the more kid-friendly attractions here. It is the Twirl and Hurl. It's just one of those spinning attractions a la Dumbo or something like that. But it is family friendly and one of only two outdoor rides here currently at the time I'm making this video. The other being Rip Ride Rocket. There will be another outdoor attraction later in the year I'll tell you about that in a bit. But there is the Quickie Mart. How fun is that? Oh, the ride's getting ready to go. Here it goes. This is what it looks like in action. Told you, you know, kind of like Dumbo, you just spin around and you can move your ride vehicle up and down. The alien there, really snarky. Does provide us with some good quotes though. But anyway, back through Springfield, you're gonna find a lot, of, a lot of places to eat in here. Eat and drink. Because of course, when you're in Springfield, you need what? You need a Duff beer. It's right here at the Duff Brewery, this outside bar. But there's also an inside bar, Moe's, which has Duff beer and of course, the Flaming Mo. Chief Wiggum and his crashed squad car, a popular photo spot, along with a Lard Lad. A lot of people like to take a picture there. Next to Lard Lad is Lard Lad Donuts. Get some donuts and ice cream. And the other side of the Lard Lad statue is Bumblebee Man's Tacos. Very good tacos, one of my favorite little snacky areas to eat in the park. Now I'm gonna show you the main spot to get your food. Of course I mentioned Bumblebee Man's and lard lads, but through this green wall here, that little entrance there, well first, you got restrooms to your right there, but inside here, you'll have access to multiple dining establishments. You'll have a grab and go, that's Lisa's Tea House of Horror, Luigi's for some Italian and pizza and stuff like that, the Frying Dutchman, Cletus's Chicken Shack, and of course, the beloved Rusty Burger. Here's a look inside of Moe's Tavern. That Flaming Moe's drink that I mentioned, it is non-alcoholic so the kiddos can enjoy it. Looking back from where we just came, Springfield, which once housed the Back to the Future attraction years and years ago, but there's still an homage to Back to the Future as we have the Time Machine, the DeLorean here, great photo opportunity, along with the time train. Now leaving Springfield, we have the Animal Actors on Location show. It's a show starring animals. Little place there, we can get turkey legs and I don't see any, but probably churros and pretzels and popcorn. Some face painting and caricatures can get done over here in this area. Straight ahead, we have Spongebob Store Pants, the store dedicated to Spongebob, and also his little character meet and greet is inside of there too. But, I have to show you this. At the date of this recording, the new kid zone is still under construction. Hopefully this is done by summer, so if you're visiting the second half of the year, this would be open for you, but it's not open right now. It is DreamWorks Land, 
It was once the Woody Woodpecker's kid zone, but this land when completed will feature Kung Fu Panda, some trolls, some Shrek and Donkey. Not exactly 100% sure what all is going to go in here, but they did keep the old kids roller coaster, which was Woody's Nuthouse coaster, and they are retheming it to the trolls, so it would be a troller coaster. Now what didn't go away and is still open, opening the attraction still here, around this way, we have E.T. Adventure, a beloved attraction. Right next to the SpongeBob store pants, another set of restrooms. And speaking of restrooms, I did not mention them, but I should have. Right next to the MIB gear shop, another set of restrooms. If you're bringing kids with you, you gotta know where those restrooms are. All right, now we're getting to the Hollywood section of the park here on the corner of Hollywood and Vine. Very important. I love these crepes. Central Park crepes, a must have treat or snack here in the park. Whether you get a sweet crepe or a savory crepe, you can't go wrong. As we enter Hollywood Boulevard, in case you can't remember where all the restrooms are, they're on the signs. <laughs> to our left here is Cafe La Bamba Restaurant. They offer food with a Mexican flair. To our right is Mel's Drive-In, a burger joint. To our left right here is a show. Universal Orlando's Horror Makeup Show. Part educational about movie making history and part comedy act. And just have to watch out for this guy digging through the trash. It's Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Bob. Hey, find anything good today? Not yet. Gotta get your Starbucks though, don't you? Well, I mean, it's, uh, you used to get a variety of Starbucks in here. Now it all smells like freaking pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> well, Beetlejuice was as pleasant as ever, but Hollywood Boulevard is your spot for a lot of character meet and greets. We have Marilyn coming down the road right now. Hello, Marilyn. Oh, I got a kiss. But you've got to, oh, the Simpsons are over here doing a meet and greet and photos. Door the Explorer and a little bit further down. Oh, I think they're gone. We just missed them. No, we didn't. I see Scooby and the gang a little further away. Sometimes they do their little meet and greet here by the mystery machine. But whether or not they're here or not, still a great photo spot. Just getting a, a picture by the mystery machine. But I do see the gang down here a little further. Oh, before we get to them, you have the Born Stuntacular, a very high tech spectacular stunt show it's a pretty cool show it's a stunt show but the technology they use to create this show is outstanding so two shows here on Hollywood Boulevard the horror makeup show and the born stuntacular and we have come across hey good to see you guys hi guys we do have Scooby and the gang right here. Daphne, Velma, Fred, Shaggy, and of course, the star of the show, Scooby Dooby Doo. Hey guys. I haven't spotted any today, but watch out for September and October. They're all around. So we're kind of back to where we were at the beginning of the video with the Universe store that has a little bit of Betty Boop on that side. This side of the store features Hello Kitty. So that is sort of the lay of the land here at Universal Studios Florida. I do go into more details in other videos because I'm here multiple times a week, so make sure you are subscribed. Now, if you want to get the know the lay of the land for Islands of Adventure, I have already completed that walking tour, and that video is right here. Don't miss the magic, don't miss the fun, click it. <laughs> 